Okay, I I thought to try out the D Digivolution for once. So now we have a Kuromon once again. Don't know how valuable that is, but let's look and see. Seems to be like only negative so far since it's like set back to level one. But it can accumulate levels yet again. I, I still don't really get the Digivolution. Because, like, what's the point? Can I just, like, infinitely grind stats? By de-digivolving it again, and digivolving it again, and de-digivolving it again, and so on and so forth? I don't understand the concept, really, but the new level cap is is definitely higher than than it was before. It's now 17 compared to 5 it was earlier, I think. Hmm. Yeah, I, I still don't get the concept, sorry about that. At least it's leveling up somewhat fast. Ah, okay! I want to know! I want to know! What, about Cybersleuth? Tell me more about it. What's it like being a cyber sleuth? What cases have you solved so far? And what's your boss like? Damn, he really wants in. He really, really wants in. Uh, Arata's somewhat cute right here because, like, he's so des desperate to do something good with his hacker powers, and now he's like, damn, Hector's so lucky. At least that's how I'm reading the situation. Wait till you get a load of Kyoko. She wears no bras. Tell me everything. Flashback? Uh, this is the same as the one from Kulun the other day, right? Uh, what? We just got the flashback with the little kids again, but I don't know how that ties into anything. Oh, Yugo's here. And it was Ghost Yugo. So, face-eating boy. What is it? What happened? Don't look at me! This is no time to be fooling around! What? There was a ghost? The ghost of the pale boy that all of Eden has been going on and on about? Yeah, dude. And you saw it in Kulun? For real? You're not trying to con me. Nah, you'd be the only one who isn't. Anyone could tell you that you're really soft-hearted. Why, thank you. And you clearly saw something strange. You got a good look at it, and yet saw nothing. And it left something in your head, as if something were pushed into it. Oh, we're actually talking about the Eldritch Scribbles from the first episode. Interesting. Or was it the second episode? From our first encounter with the Pale Boy. Hmm... Yeah... My suspicion solidifies that Pale Boy and Yugo are separate entities. 
or like split off entities. Hmm. Whoa, that's freaky and frustrating. To be on the cusp of remembering and yet. What the heck is that? What does it mean? Thanks, Arata. I, I like you, dude. You're asking the real questions here. Yeah. Uh, well, it's another lead to follow, perhaps. Come on, let's go. Damn, you're such a bro, Arata. Hmm, toilet stalls. Miyam Dental Clinics. Oh, and another cutscene immediately. With someone hiding behind the Oi. wall? Hey, you noticed that? Yes, I did. <laughs> Our main character's like, no, la di da di da. Listen up, you. Or should I say, sleuth. Something's been following us for the last while. Hmm. I don't know exactly what or who it is. A Digimon or a ghost? Or maybe it's her. From the little snippet we saw, it was not the detective because the figure wore like... What was it called? Hakama? I think? Like the... the the kendo pants, the the real loose pants. Oh no, it was. It was a cape. You. Okay, panicked man. No, he is. Definitely a creepy scientist. He has that scientist stare. I bet he's one of the Kam Kamishiro scientists. Okay. Um, how do I voice him? Uh, I'm trying to emulate it, okay? Oh dear, oh dear. Good day to you. Hmm? Uh -huh. Oh dear, oh dear! Good day to you! Nah, nah, not really. Hmm. Oh, oh dear, oh dear! Good day to you! Yeah, maybe so, maybe a bit more. Ugh. So. Whoa, easy there! Let's not be hasty. I'm not going to be scared of- I'm uh, nothing to be scared of, I assure you. Who are you? What are you doing here? My name is Akimi Suedo. I'm a researcher for Kamishiro Enterprises. Nailed it! Nailed it. <sighs> okay. Akemi Suedo. Yeah, I think I'm just giving him the creepy guy voice I gave the... the lovesick hacker in, in Nokia's episode, in the last episode. I'm currently studying this strange phenomenon. You're alone? Yes, I'm alone. I'm very much the only special specialist capable of making these breakthroughs. Though I still, I'd still very much appreciate it if they gave me an assistant. I tell you, it's a terrible company. 
Why were you following us? Sorry, just taking a sip. I hadn't thought there were humans who'd make it farther in than I had. I wanted to observe things for a bit more. Did I happen to unsettle you? There's no excuse for that. I apologize. Well, I guess it's not no big deal. But if you're in the mood to apologize to us, tell us what this is. We want to know. Oh dear! Put it that way, and I can hardly refuse. I trust you won't go around blabbing about this to anyone. Sure thing, right, Hector? Okay, for now. Very well then, I shall tell you. But my tale comes out of my work process and is at best the result of inductive reasoning. Yeah, inductive reasoning for those not too savvy in the sciences is a bad thing. Like, in proper theory, inductive reasoning is like the big no-no. You have to falsify things, you have to falsify theories and not verify them. Meaning you cannot just say, Oh, I found a black swan, therefore all swans are black. No, you have to look at the data, say, okay, I've seen only white swans. Maybe that could mean there only exist white swans. Now I am going to actively try to disprove my theory. And look at all available swans all across the world, saying, uh, seeing if there are, are such things as non-white swans. So inductive reasoning means he's basically just guessing and presenting something that has no scientific basis based on his ob observations. Yeah. I caution you that this is not a final conclusion. Thank you, good sir. To begin, let's discuss the space we are in. This space exists within a certain phenomenon. We're in the whirlpool of a special digital wave. You know what I'm referring to? A digital wave. I, I mean, I don't. Arata told us to Google it earlier, but we didn't exactly have the time for that. So please, good sir, if you would enunciate and explain. Or Arata is taking the charge. It's a flow of energy that carries digital information, correct? Brilliant! Straight from the textbooks! This may be the digital world, but it's still a world made up of digital information. Oh no, this may be the real world, but it's still a world made up of digital information. Hmm, so... He's basically saying... Like, DNA and stuff and chemical formulas are technically a type of information and that is why the digital can encroach on it? Like, like a virus spread? So... 
the digital energy, the digital wave that they are talking about is some, in this universe, is some form of energy that is separate from, like, the end user terminals from, from Eden and from, from, like, your computer and stuff. The digital exists as some sort of information energy that can actually be measured and, like, scienced with. To put it in the very simplest of terms, the real world has transformed into cyberspace. As a result, everything here has become data. Even human thought. That's quite the leap of logic, isn't it? Tee, <laughs> I won't deny that. My colleagues often deem my ideas rather heretical. Heretical. Some even compared me to Nikola Tesla. I mean, that's actually a compliment, isn't it? Oh, that's more well and good. But I do try not to let the paradise, the praise go to my head. Not enough of that. Have a look at this. The irregularities of this internal structure should indicate any uh, away should indicate right away that we are dealing with digitized data made from human memories. Yeah, that's the curious thing about memory. Memory, uh, memory as a physical thing does not really exist. Like we have neurons, but like the configuration between neurons is is like what makes up memory. Hmm. So. That's why, like, memory uh, information is not graspable. It's the same with confu computers. Like the the configuration of zero and ones, like the little let's just simplify them as switches in computers, is what makes up information, right? So that's why information as a physical thing does not exist. So. He's basically saying, like, the digital energy is, yeah, is, like, altering these patterns in the real world, like, in chemical formulas, like, connections between, 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 like, atoms and something, like, like, plastic, for example, is not, it's not an element. Plastic is not an element, it's a, it's a compound, it's a molecule, right? So... Plastic only exists as a spe as a configuration of elements, and is not actually a thing that is real in that in that sense in an in an information sense. Hmm. They merge with reality, giving rise to this bizarre and complex space. That's my theory, in essence. Look at me trying to science out this thing. <laughs> Even if, uh, like, 90% of what I, I said was, like, just bullshitting to make science fit with, with this world. Now, allow me to ask you a question. Have you encountered an eater yet? Dude, you have to explain a little bit more. An eater? What's that? 
侵食するものという意味で私はイーターと呼んでいます That's the term I've coined for these entities that devour and eat, a, eat away at things ひょっとしてあの白黒のオウム街みたいな気に悪いプログラムのことか Do you mean the thing that looks like a black and white nautilus shell? That freaky program? Precisely! To have escaped an encounter with an eater and skate. You don't know how lucky you are. Well, I wouldn't exactly say I'm scathed. When an eater preys upon something, all its comprising data is eroded away and it becomes glitched. Glitched? What does it mean? All structure and algorithms become dis disordered data, glitched, completely defective. Hmm. So it's like cancer, right? Yeah, it's it's basically like cancer. The Nautilus shell thingy, the eater, acts as a virus upon reality, injecting itself into like the DNA or like the information configuration that makes up reality and alters it, right? Damn, I, I actually think I got this figured out. I think my in universe my explanation makes sense. Yeah, because like that's what what cancer does, like like it damages and there are actual viruses that can cause cancer, but they are rare. But, but yes, cancer basically destroys our, our, cell, our cells that, that basically have become useless by having their genetical information scrambled, right? Or like viruses like also use destroy cells by injecting genes into something. And they inject like RNA. Hmm. Science with Hecto. You might actually learn something if I'm not completely wrong. Which could also be the case. But let's continue. And once that data becomes glitched, it cannot be restored. Oh dear. How frightful that would be! How truly frightful indeed! Indeed! Well, that doesn't bode too well for us. It seems we cannot be restored. So you end up being eaten. That's the common theory, at any rate. It doesn't happen to... I, I do not happen to agree, however. Oh, good. Huh? What? There must be a way to restore data. It's logical to assume otherwise. Not in a metaphysical sense, mind. I'm talking about actual digital phenomena. And in that case, bugs are things we are well aware of. Therefore, I am pressing on with my eater research. Well, that is actually good for us. He says we can be restored. Hmm. Hey, mister! Calm down! Let me get this straight. Kamishiro knows about these eaters. That doesn't sound good.
That goes without saying. That's why I'm pursuing this research. Crap, so they did know about them. Those admin creeps have been stonewalling me. Well, they are a business providing a service. There's lots that needs to be kept confidential. I told you, it's a terrible, terrible, terrible company, didn't I? Hmm. You know what? I'm actually somewhat liking Sue though. He's super creepy, but and like seems very shady. And his, his design makes me suspect he's evil, but he has been nothing but honest with us. And yeah, go, dude. Maybe maybe you're on the good team after all. There's more I want to ask on that front. Yes, I see. If I can provide answers, I shall. Ask away. Very accommodating of you. Dude, you're like my favorite scientist in the world right now. But before that... I spoke too soon. You appear to be hackers, am I correct? You possess the Digimon Capture Program. And you have marvelous Digimon programs as well! Gasp? What's it to you? Frankly put, I want to find out the eater that is likely roaming around here somewhere. I, I mean, come on in, dude. Just, just join the party. The more, the merrier. What? An eater is here too? I mean that also. Did you not see a strange apparition before? Perhaps you know it as the ghost of the pale boy. Oh, so... Yugo Glitch is actually the eater incarnate? Like, his avatar? Like, you know how Digimon can swap between a human form and a Digimon form, or like they can at least imitate avatars, right? That is indicative, indi in indicative of an eater's presence. A harbinger, I suppose you could say. An eater's existence both impacts the digital wave and serves to induce it. That is my thoughts on the matter. At any rate, that the digital wave itself might impact it. That the digital wave itself might be impacted by the eaters. If so, we cut off the head and the body should wither away. To back up this theory, I'd like to ask for your assistance, if I may. You research around you. You should have a secret weapon at your disposal, right? A camera that can detect hidden objects, or a ball we can stuff captured creatures into? I mean, the latter sh is probably e e because you watch too much, much Pokemon, Arata. <laughs> See, he agrees with me. Those are oddly specific examples there. 
在のところピーターへの対抗手段はデジモンプログラムが最も適当です It turns out that at present our best weapon against the eaters are Digimon programs あのプログラムにはバグ化への耐性がありますいやすいやすとは侵食を受けるでしょう Those programs are particularly bug resistant. They can resist erosion with little difficulty. Okay, affirmative. Yeah, but. Suedo san, Anto shinji to waku janai na. Mr. Suedo, it's not that I don't believe you. Areo haijo shirotten nara. Ore tachi mo nozomu tokoro da. But you want us to, to wipe that thing out, right? Well, that just happens to be our goal as well. Oh, excellent! Best of luck to you then. Well then, we're off for revenge. And let's find our way back to the real world. The longer we're here, the weirder my head gets. I shall await you here. If you have any questions, come and seek me out. I mean, thank you, dude. You're being, you're being really nice. A regular world, you say? And where ex that exactly might that be, I wonder? Ooh, ominous. Is our world, like, already fusing with the digital world? Maybe. But in that case, what is Eden? Because we know... Uh, I actually have to correct my, my speech patterns here, because... I've already been referring to Eden as the digital world, which it isn't. Last episode, we learned that Agumon, Gabumon, and all the other Digimon come from a place literally named the digital world. So, if the digital world and the real world are fusing, what is up with Eden, which is like some realm in between? Okay, with that head scratcher, I guess I'm already going to end the episode. Like, how much time is there? Yeah, already over an hour. I mean, minus the minus the little bit in the digital app in the beginning, it should be already an hour. So yeah, we'll continue our quest with Arata. In Digimon Stories Cyber Sleuth episode 12. Hopefully. Okay, that was nice. I, I love theorizing and I hope you guys do too. If you have not not seen uh, this game before, please don't spoil anything if you have. But if you have not seen it, put your little theories in the comments below and remember i know nothing of digimon so nah. be vague if it is something that only digimon nerds would know because i i, I love no i love being not in the know if you get my drift it, it's actually really fun this is this is the fun part of the game for me more more so than the exploration and the battles even so yeah I've been your host Hecto, and this was Moon Pressure Let's Plays. I hope to see you ladies and gents in the next one, I guess.